database where it's going to be correlated together. It's, it's, it's pretty impressive, actually, everything they have put together. Now, the way the case broke is they detected some of that fraudulent activity. They didn't really know what was going on. They started shutting it down. Now, but on October 27th, so a month later, well, back a month later, um, and someone whose name I'm not going to pronounce, 41-year-old Nigerian national, was arrested with five cell phones and three credit cards. That is the first person in the fraud that they were actually able to capture. Uh, when I gave this presentation a few years ago, we didn't, we didn't, that didn't actually have been published yet. So that was what, November? So now we're out into February. What happened between November and February? Is I think there were a lot of lawyers, a lot of business executives, sitting in a room going, so um, we need to tell people about this? Uh, what's our legal liability? I, I can guarantee you, nobody is this close on a big basis for 1386. And you can imagine the discussions that went on in those rooms as they were coming up with this. So they're like, well, okay, we're going to notify the California residents. 35,000 residents with records for sure we know. This is November, January, February. So, you know, two months later, three months, a little less, two and a half, a uh, month and a half, a couple of months after the first fraud was detected. So then, well, they started getting these questions like, is it just California? Did these guys have a record in California? And so a few days later, they went ahead and revealed the problem. not limited to California. And the 38 state attorneys general go, what about our people? So they didn't notify anybody who died in California. But there was no law saying you had to get it. Uh, so if you don't know, the attorneys general is the senior law enforcement officer, basically, in, in uh, any of these states. And so 38 of the states said, uh, hey, what about us? We need some more info here. Um, so they went ahead and demanded notification. So they added another 110,000 people, and then eventually the total was raised to 100. 3,000 people were notified. They only limited the scope of their investigation to July 1st, 2003. Anybody know why? 1386 went anyway. They stopped investigating from before. Law enforcement officials who were involved with this case publicly stated they felt that about 500,000 people at least were involved. None of them had disclosure. Uh, because Choice Point did the minimum legal of what they needed to do. Now, the CEO of Choice Point, I can't remember her name, but at the time she said, we've never seen anything like this before. Then the LA Times has their first story on uh, March 2nd here. So really at the time, I mean, this is pretty tight if you look at the state. Uh, I wish the resolution was higher or we could deal with the light issue here. But um, basically that the, uh, the same thing had occurred in 2002 was in the Wall Street Journal. The exact same kind of fraud. They didn't change their business practices. So we think we're done, but we're not done actually at this point. Um, because there were multiple, so there was an FTC settlement that was involved, going to the numbers in a bit, on a class action lawsuit was settled for $10 million um, in 2008. So which was after I gave the, the presentation the last time I did this. So basically the timeline, 2004 to 2008, um, were the breach. And, and actually it goes into 2009, because they had another breach. So the 2009 one, most people don't know about, it's really, now Choice Point did a lot to improve their security. Uh, one of the things they did, though, is they unfortunately turned off one of their fraud analysis systems for four months. Nobody knew it was turned off for four months. And, of course, fraud occurred within those four months. Now, as part of their settlement, they had to uh, undergo some, you know, security assessments. Somehow. Somebody finally figured it out. They turned the switch back on. They got that fraud stuff back on. But by that point, the FTC was involved again. Uh, and they have to now submit bi-monthly reports to the FTC on their security um, around these things. And if we zoom all the way out to 2026, that is when the end of mandatory security audits related to the 2004 breach end. Yeah, 2004 to 2026. So 22 years that they're going to be involved with, that they're going to be dealing with it. What they have to do is, I believe, uh, they have to have an annual, or I think it's an annual third-party security assessment. And that data provided to the FBI. It's kind of cool when you like actually look at the whole cases for these things. That's why I like giving this presentation or why I ever did the whole thing. Um, now, if we drop back in to, there we go. It's a little tricky to actually do these slides. All right. So if we actually go ahead and we pull their losses together, uh, their FTC settlement, the initial settlement, which was in 2006, I skipped that part of the slide, was for $10 million. They estimated $2 million for notification costs. 
25 in legal and professional fees. They estimated a lot, the law sales from business practice changes, that's what they did in their annual report, because they're a big company and that's material loss. So they estimated that at 15 to 20 million dollars. They had to set up a victim's trust fund as part of their FTC settlement for $5 million, and then they settled the shareholder lawsuit in 2008 for $10 million. 10, 20, 40, 40, 7, 7 plus 9.5, big numbers for company. Um, and this one, what was the technical flaw? There was no technical flaw. This is purely a business case. And you know, I initially I almost wondered about including this. We were a technology focused, you know, kind of group here. But the reality was the CISO had nothing to do with this. Now he got fired anyway. Does anybody know why? The CISO, when the first breach came out, uh, when you know why, he would not shut up. He was screaming far and wide. And I was on a call with this guy actually, uh, because uh, again, he was darker briefing everybody out there about how it was not a security failure, none of their security controls failed, blah, 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 blah. So what is that equivalent of saying? I am screwed up, the people I work for screwed up. How, eh, yeah, not good for job security. Shut, <laughs> shut, he would still have a job, but no. So we go back to our timeline. Uh, we have Lexus Nexus, April 12, 2005, uh, 310,000 records. Um, basically, it was fraud. Somebody got into the multi-state anti-terrorism information exchange using credentials. Yet again, no hacking, not really real hacking as we talked about. And then we hit Bank of America, May 23rd, 2005. Another one of the ones where it's actually worth spending a little bit more time talking about. Because this was another of the most significant, this is one of the most significant breaches we've had. In the sense that on uh, February 25th, report surface backup case 1.2 million credit card numbers were lost. Now this is the interesting part. It included information from a credit card program for federal workers. Um, <coughs> federal workers include senators. Senators are that other group I said you don't want to piss off. And uh, they don't know what happened to these. I have never been able to find out, by the way, what the resolution in this case was. The FBI was involved with the investigation. There may have been resolution. It is not needed in any media reports that I was able to scour uh, as I was doing all my research. And this is multiple years of research. In this case, I've been covering since 2005. Um, they believe they might have been stolen by the Agate Chandlers uh, in December. Uh, has anybody ever looked at the back of the Iron Mountain trucks when you throw your tapes in there? The big, secure Iron Mountain trucks with the pilot of tapes in the back? And that's pretty much all it is. Iron Mountain is big, lost a lot of tapes for a lot of people over the years, um, which is why they now sell back to the purchase solutions. Uh, Senator Lee, Democrat Vermont, started holding congressional hearings, which, yeah, he didn't. He didn't and goes on doing anything. It's just a chance for that. But still, it's embarrassing for Bank of America. And we're going to get back to the whole lost tape thing in, in a little bit. And again, um, yeah, we're going to get back to that one. And then we have Card System Solutions in 2005. Now, what's interesting is when, for those of us who study this stuff, Card Systems, what do I think about that being like ancient history? And Card Systems actually happened after Choice Point. Uh, card Systems, and that's a building implosion, is what I've got up there, because that's what happened here. Uh, on my egg head, this one put him out of business. And so let's pull up the timeline for it. So basically what happens is they fail the first PCI assessment June 1st, 2003. Now, the Visa CISP program, PCI, which became PCI later with the integration of the other card companies, actually started about 2000, 2001. Um, and these guys are big processors, so they were involved with it. They're actually based out of Arizona, which is where I live now. Um, so they built the first assessment June 1st, 2003. They actually got PCI certified June 1st, 2004. Very different requirements then than if you were involved uh, in an assessment or analyze those. This is cool. The fraud was picked up by National Australia Bank, credit card processor in Arizona, with 40 employees. So they did a lot of transactions with 40 employees. National Australia Bank started detecting some fraud. They started tracing back the fraud. They actually tried to bring that to the other MasterCard. They, they went ahead and got it back. They uh, figured out that it was card system solutions. They, um, they didn't get a good response out of Visa and MasterCard initially. And once they were able to nail the fraud more and figure it out, Visa and MasterCard started kicking off their investigations. Notice, November 1st to April 1st. That was the timeline to get Visa and MasterCard to do their investigations after NAB went ahead and figured out the first attempt of that and fraud. Um, they uh, basically, uh, May 22nd is the date where Card Systems claims that they discovered